We're not set up to break you. We're here to rehabilitate. Good to see you again, and uh, congrats on this, Craig. Um, Thanks, mate. It's good to see you too. Yeah, you too. So, Steve is probably, uh, I think, one of the darkest roles I've ever seen you play. I'm not saying he is the darkest role, because I probably haven't seen all of your films, but I like to think I've seen most of them. But would I be right in saying that? He's, he's probably the, the most violent yeah, man. He's super dark. <laughs> so... Um, He's talk, to about him. <laughs> talk to me about him. Who, who is he? How does he fit into the, to this story? Yeah, well, it is a very, very, yeah, he is a, a mega dark character. It's a heavy duty script, heavy duty film. Um, I was drawn to it because I loved that stuff. I just love dark characters mm. sparring out of control. Um, and yeah, he's in prison. He's a Category A prisoner serving 20 years for the, the, the murder of his, his wife and her lover. <clears throat> he also has a history of violence as a kid growing up. You know, his life has not been... That's all it's been. I think he's been institutionalised as a kid. Um, and now we find him in this prison dealing with them demons and dealing with his life and on reflection thinking about, you know, fighting the system and how the monotony of every day, you know, mm -hmm. being locked in that, that cell. And that's what we tried to try to achieve. And I think we did achieve that, you know, that horrible claustrophobic feel of being locked in that room, that 10 by eight room mm -hmm. daily, nightly. And then right out of the blue, he gets to a new cellmate played by the incredible Stephen Adubola, Marcus Wainwright. Um, and an unlikely sort of bond begins to grow between him. He recognises a lot of a lot of attributes in 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 Marcus that he that he had growing up, mm. and he realises, you know, that he is you can be a product of the system, mm. you know. Um, and their relationship gets get closer, and he sort of he becomes like the daughter that he never had. He becomes his sur surrogate you know, family member that he sort of takes under his wing and wants to look after. Yeah. Um, you know, and protect him from the other inmates and protect him what's going on outside the prison because he's right up against it, Marcus. You know, he's a young black gang member. Um, for that age group, it's brutal. Yeah. You know. I spoke to Stephen uh, a couple of days ago about the film <clears> and um, I asked him a similar question. The first part of the film... I mean, it's kind of a, it's a weird sort of uh, uh, thing your character goes through. You, early in the film, you've got no, hardly any dialogue. A lot of it's said in suggestion and that sort of thing, particularly your first interactions with um, Stephen's character, Marcus. Mm. And then all of a sudden, you've got pages and pages of dialogue. And I yeah. think I, I was on the set for one day, and I don't think you recognised me, and they didn't see me, but I could see you absorbed in this script. So, because uh, it's it, it's very much a dialogue-driven um, character, isn't it? It's certainly, it, it, yeah. So, how what was that yeah. like? Because this, this is a little bit different to kind of the other stuff you've done recently. It's yeah, a little bit more demanding. Would that be fair to say? Oh, massively. To be honest with you, I, I was talking about this when I went because after this, I went down and did a couple of days on on Foot Soldier Origins, and I was talking to Nick about it, and he was saying to me, you know, because he's an actor. Um, you know, approaching different roles. And I was just like, I said, well, with this one, I had to approach it like I was doing a play. Yeah. Literally had to do it. Like I started six weeks prior, you know, and every day I would lock myself away for five or six, seven hours. And because it was the type of material that you had, you, you, you could not turn up in that room, shooting that film in lockdown with a mask on, with the people, with the heat, with the cables and the cameras and the, 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 the madness and not be on top of the material. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So I had yeah. to learn it semi backwards. Yeah. Um, so I had, I, it, it was like a part of me. So it, it became, I could change words or do things and the vernacular and to make it sound more natural and, 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 but, there's one scene, it's like 14 pages long, and we cut it right down. 
And that's the scene between me and Ross McCall when he plays my dad and he comes back in this like dream. Yeah. Um, and it was, oh, we, we spend the day shooting it and it was just draining. Yeah. Because you think you're not doing anything, but you're talking, but because you're, you're pulling on your, the memory muscle. Mm. Um, yeah. And that's what you do. Yeah, absolutely. You, and you said you, you shot it in the middle of COVID, but you also shot it in one room. It's all set in, in a prison cell. It doesn't leave that cell. You're in, I, you know, I was there, I saw it. It was like a set that was green screened up for the, the doorway, basically. Yeah. Um, but you shot it in such a confined space. And I spoke to Ross yesterday and he, did it, he said he did it that way because he could obviously take walls there and that sort of thing. He didn't do that much in the end, but it was a lot more freedom and, and, and a lot more creative uh, stuff to overcome in that confined yeah. space. So how is it as an actor shooting in that confined space, telling a story like this? Well, to be honest with you, th this is one of the things that drew me towards the project because I've got great admiration and respect for Bart Rispoli. You know, he's the, the main man at Ascendant Films. Mm. He's got great taste in films. And um, he said to me, you know, I've got this script. I'd love you to have a look at it. And I, was, I read it and I've, I called him back straight away. I read it in one sitting and I was like... But, mate, I said, it's so heavy. I don't know. I don't know. He said, well, I've got an idea. I said, go on. You know, I've just done boiling. We're going to do boiling point all in one take. I went, yeah. He said, well, I want to do this all in one room. I went, it's impossible. You can't. He said, I'm telling you. Yeah. We're going to build the set. We're going to take walls out, ceilings out, this out, bits of the floor, that back wall, this wall. He said, I've got the... The number one guy, Stefan Kupek, he's an incredible DOP. This fellow is so talented. You, when you meet him, you're loving. And I, I went and met him and I, I fell in love with the guy. He's just, just so calm and good and so stylish and so creative. I was like, I'm in great hands. Yeah. And we shot, I think we did in excess of 135 setups. Never repeated one shot. And that camera never leaves that room. I mean, it's a feat in itself. Yeah. And, you you know, if you're looking for it, you may find it. I think one critic yesterday said completely misconstrued the whole reason why. I'm not going to mention it, but we all know. Um, <laughs> I think I've just read it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it completely misses the point. Yeah. You know, it's nothing to do with anything apart from we set out to make that film yeah. in that room mm. to get that feeling of the claustrophobic, the... Because I watched it, it gave me anxiety. I was sitting there going, oh, it's just so, you know, suppressive to watch. It's, um... I thought the same thing, actually. And obviously, the first shot is like the camera's upside down, right? And it's kind of it's disorientating yeah. from, from the very opening frame. So, and it just continues on from there. And I was there. I knew the setup. I knew how they did it. But I, yeah. that, that was lost on me within 10 minutes. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I know where you're coming from with that. So... How is Ross to work with? Because obviously this is another actor. You just mentioned Nick Laverne. You know, you've done that with, uh, you've done obviously Foot Soldier with him recently. You've worked with Phil Barantini on um, Villain, which is yeah. on your head there. Um, they're all fucking actors that are the right. worst. <laughs> exactly. Bart, Bart's an actor. Hester, uh, one of the other producers, yeah. she, she, she acts yeah. obviously as well. So what do they yeah. bring? You've worked with many directors over the years. I'm sure with other actors as well. So uh, as directors, but what do they bring to the table in terms of difference? between some of uh, It's an interesting question. It's a very interesting question that because, uh, you know, you tend to find that actors are more intuitive with another actor. They know what you're going through. You know, you know, you know, Phil was very much, we work beautifully together, very in tune. Um, same with Ross. You know, I was a huge fan of Ross. I love Band of Brothers. I always, I always booked him as a quality actor. Mm. Um, and when Bart said to me, oh, yeah, Ross has wrote this. And I was like, all oh, right. Yeah, because you sometimes you can prejudge that, you know, and when it came through, I was I was just so happy that it was artistic. I yeah. know that sounds a real, but I gravitate towards that stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because it's easy to make a prison film. We've yeah. all seen them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. To, 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 to do it, to do it like that. And to read that script, and I felt for the, the guy, Steve Mackelson. I know he's killed four or five people, but we tried to get something in there that you sort of go, oh, I know he's done this, but, you know, he's not a bad fella. 
and he's 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 well read. He's he's edu- You know, he's made himself educated in the Nick. He's 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 used it. But Ross, me and Ross were very much in tune. We had a, a little tiny little disagreements, but on the whole, I think we worked really well together. I look forward to going to work there every day, and I know he felt the same way. And we left every day with a hug. So we were like only interested in one thing: making a good film. Yeah, and. I just checked this on your, your your credits, but you've never directed. So is that is that something you would do as an actor? You know what? I, I, I haven't got the patience. That's the problem. <laughs> you need so much patience. And don't get me wrong, when I'm when I'm writing stuff and doing stuff and and you know, with with little London heights that we did and breakdown, I had a little say in certain things. And sometimes there when I'm with the camera. But it is a massive chunk out your of time. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a year out of your life. Yeah, no, I agree. No, absolutely. So let's talk about these three films that are just uh, positioned behind you. So there's there's Berlin, obviously, from, uh, I think... This is my about... study, by the way. Yeah. This is my little shrine. I've started only because I'm a granddad now, just lining up all the little jobs I've done. <laughs> <laughs> that must be quite a few posters in that room, I should think. But yeah. um, so it's, it's over three decades you've been, you've been acting now, right? I, I've checked that. Yeah. Uh, so the eight is... Uh, uh, right to, to to now, so but those three films behind you there, I see those as a trilogy of films that are very similar but also very unique uh, in their own right. So you've been on a bit of a journey from uh, you know the last three years. So um, would that be fair to say that these films have all been sort of daring, challenging, and probably rewarding as well? You know, one thousand percent. Would you agree with 1, that? One thousand percent. You've always been a little bit of a sh- bit of a sharp one, you. Yeah, very. <laughs> No, you have. You've always said, no, every time I've met you, you've always you sort of sort of know what which is great. Yeah. yeah. I mean they're all they're all they're all been logistically placed and they've all been a stepping stone. And I think, and I mean this, I was blown away with muscle. I it was, it's just such a special film for me. And that was the start of it because it was a test. I wonder if Fairbrass can pull this off because, you know, people would know me from Foot Soldier, the big geezer, you know, he could, weren't a bad actor, but he could. But I think my emotional range in muscle sort of came to the forefront and I finally got some incredible reviews from some very highbrow critics mm. who sort of took me serious as an actor. Absolutely. Which was, which was which was fantastic because, you know, at the end of the day, that's why I became an actor. Yeah. Um, and then Bart saw that and then said, I've got this quite complex, not your usual gangster type film, villain. And then that, and we were number one on Netflix for nine days and number two in overall content for nine days. And for a little British indie film, mm. you the, the, the the, pub, the public or my little audience took to it. Mm. And then we finished, and then we did this. And now we're just in the throes of just finishing another one that is really good. So, okay, you know. So I was going to come on to that. So I don't know too much about that. Obviously, I'll wait till these things come to the forefront and come my way. But Of course. Um, <laughs> yeah. so can you tell us anything about that? Who's not who's no. that? You don't no. like it. Next question. I'm very <laughs> <laughs> superstitious about everything. You know. Okay, fine. I look forward to seeing that anyway. But um, so yeah, that's great. So that rounds off that trilogy in my head, my little head anyway, my sort of yeah. uh, you know uh, your, your journey. But you, you you also have done and continue to do, and I googled this this morning, this video game stuff, which is hugely popular. So um, and you've I've, I've seen some screenshots this morning of of, of Gary Oldman. Mark Hamill, Henry Cavill, and you in this video game. So is that is that something you will always continue to do? Do you enjoy working? I have no idea how these things work. So w- what does that look like for an actor? Uh, oh, that's a totally different medium. I mean, it's fantastic, and I'm very, very grateful that I sort of got myself a little bit bu- little position. You know, came after doing overall, I did like five Call of Duty games. Mm. Um, each time I came back and voiced three different characters. Then I did two, like one online game in China. Then I got, then I got them all muddled up and got myself into a little bit of trouble. Mm. And then something came out a couple of weeks ago about another one they're doing. And then Battlefield came to me and said, 
we're doing a big motion capture game. We'd love you to, we love your voice. Would you like to come and do a, a motion capture game uh, mm -hmm. under no flag, which was the last battlefield. So I did that and then off of that came Star Citizen, which I was, uh, they just offered it to me and said, you know, do you want to do it? And when I looked at the cast, I was like, this is unbelievable. Mm. And that was a week down in uh, Andy Circus's studio, but Gillian Anderson, Henry Cavill, Gary Oldman, Mark Hamill. Mm. I, I mean, if you look on the cast list of that game, it is phenomenal. Yeah. And me, <laughs> I'm standing there thinking, That's you know, funny. just yeah, it's it really good. I just noticed the screenshots and how lifelike they are, uh, you know, I'll get yeah. to recognise you in, in that. So that's in the future. That's not out yet. That's, that's soon, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's all, uh, it's all in post. It's been in post for a while. And there's a couple of other things that have just sort of like a, 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 a percolating now, but no, it's, uh, you know, you can turn up in flip flops, put your headphones on and you can just shout and scream or, you know, do what you've got to do. And it's, yeah. it's enjoyable. Do you wear the bobbly suits and all that sort of stuff or? Oh, don't. It's hate free hours to put on. <laughs> I had to go to Serbia, fly to Serbia to get scanned. I was yeah. out there for like three or four days and then fly to Sweden to then do where they do the, where you go there, where they put everything on you. Yeah. You know, the little things in your fingers, your face and eyes. It literally takes you three hours to get dressed. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and then you're in it all day long and it is... Or, or, or just constantly, you know, just a green screen. Right. Totally. Be enjoyable. Yeah, totally different. So the Foot Soldier films, is that for you now? Is that is that done? Is that kind of, you know, you've done, you've done five or you've done four? four I've done four. Yeah. 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 So is that it? Three. Never say never? <laughs> <laughs> Not saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I enjoyed the last, I particularly enjoyed the last yeah. couple. I thought, you know... Yeah. I like Marbella the most. I thought it was fantastic. I thought uh, a lot yeah, of people say that to me. I'm a big yeah. fan of that one. I don't know why. I think it was just. I just yeah. don't think it. You know, it took itself as seriously as some of the others. But I think, yeah, I just really enjoyed the performance in that. Andy so. Loved Day got me in a headlock two weeks ago and said, "You're doing another one." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay." They look very enjoyable. Nice lunch. Had a nice lunch. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, just coming back to to a violent man, just to finish it off. Um, Obviously, the the you know the films there. It's out on Friday. It's on digital. Anyone can go and watch it. They can watch it at home. How would you describe it to? Because you have got a loyal fan base. You've got a huge fan base. I know you said you have a little fan base. You've got a huge fan base. How would you describe that film to the to those people and anyone else that sort of um, wants to see it? Maybe? Well, I'd, I'd like you to look at it like villain. You know, there's violence in there, but if you sit there and watch it and don't look at your phone and get sucked into it, it's a very dark, disturbing piece. You know, it's very relevant of today, what's going on, you know, uh, prisons, white geezers, black geezers, you know, that whole, that, that, the gang culture. Um, but it's a, it's also a tragic story, which I can't forget. It is very, you know, it is, it's, it's, it's a tragic piece at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, but I just hope they, they, you know, they take it on board and watch it as, as another one of my films and know that, you know, I'm trying to deliver quality product that makes people think, you know, that you can also have films with fisty cuffs and do what we've got to do and the shouting and the swearing, mm -hmm. but also um, a good little story. Yeah. Just hope you enjoy it. Well, I enjoyed it, I, and, I, and I wish you all the best with it. I wish it's, I hope it's as successful as Villain and Muscle. I think it's up there with those two. So, so well done. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. It's cousins across. It's all I got. I'd rather they kill me than have them push my family around. There's the other part. If there are any more incidents, allegations, <laughs> Silver. Don't, 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 mate. Don't, don't.